Young Living is a huge MLM, which stands for multi-level marketing company. The founder is D. Gary Young. They sell mainly essential oils and they have many other products too. There have been many, many videos done on the controversies of Young Living and the problems with MLMs in general. I will leave a bunch of those videos below. But today, we're going to dive into the world of Young Living as it relates to mommy vloggers. In this video, I want to take a deeper dive into mommy vloggers and the world of Young Living. They are pushing dangerous essential oils onto their customers, and I really want to bring awareness to this situation. So let's get into it. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Marissa. If you're new here, your favorite problematic housewife, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and hit that bell. So, before we get really into the mommy vloggers, how they're pushing these essential oils in a dangerous way, I want to take a minute to give you a little bit of a rundown about D. Gary Young, the founder of Young Living. He founded Young Living in 1993, but he had his fair share of controversies. He got arrested for practicing medicine without a license in the United States. He then went to Tijuana to practice medicine again with no license. He got caught multiple times trying to cure cancer patients with essential oils. So this guy was all about using essential oils to heal and cure cancer and all these things that are just not true. He also had a controversy where he tried to deliver his baby girl in water and the baby ended up dying. And Allegedly, the baby would have survived, and he tried to deliver his own child. He didn't have the training, he didn't have a license, and the baby didn't make it, and that's just really sad. He Gary Young died in 2018, but the way he pushes essential oils for medical use and to cure things in health and wellness is very similar to the mommy vloggers today. So why I decided to do this video is because there are so many mommy vloggers that join this MLM, Young Living, and they're pushing these oils. And in my opinion, it's really like a cult because these women live, breathe, and believe the power of these essential oils. So today we're going to focus on Tiffany Beeston, Erin Williams, and Tara Henderson. Now there's a ton more moms on the internet who you know, uh, go to Young Living and push Young Living. But for the sake of time and this video, I'm going to focus on them three and what I found on their Instagrams and how are they promoting these oils. Now, as you know, Young Living is an MLM and these women are pretty close to the top. Young Living has these lavish parties like the infamous pink party. They take them on trips. They're close with the wife of Gary Young and they go to the lavender fields and take videos and photos and you know they promote on social media this lavish healthy lifestyle using these essential oils. Now I know everybody has their opinion on MLMs and I do too but I do have a sense of empathy for moms and why they join MLMs in the first place. One of my main issues is the medical advice that it seems like these moms are pushing 
to other mothers. That young living is pushing to other people. First of all, ingesting, inhaling, topical use. You have to be very careful with essential oils. They are extremely potent and powerful. And if you ingest too much or you put it directly on your skin or you, you know, your pets could be at risk of inhaling the essential oils. And I don't really feel like care is used when advertising and kind of pushing the use of these essential oils. Now, I'm gonna get into a little bit later in the video of the serious, dangerous things that they are putting on their Instagram that women are following and doing, and a lot of women are being misled by the use of these oils. So when I started looking into this, I saw that each mommy vlogger has their own Instagram that they use to push Young Living. And another interesting thing is they're pretty much pushing the products to who they want to recruit. And they don't come out and say that they're looking to recruit people. But when they're pushing how to use these oils and things like that, it will say, oh, sign up, you get a free diffuser, join our team. It's a lot of join our team come join us. It's not, oh, buy this diffuser or buy this oil. It's come join us. Kind of cult-like, right? And I know this is typical of MLMs. And the main focus of this video is going to be, like I said, how they use them. But I didn't want to ignore the fact that they are trying to recruit people. They are trying to get more people in their downline. So these women... As far as it looks on social media, they, you know, eat, breathe, sleep, believe these essential oils. And they use these essential oils for every single part of their life, from chest rubs to cleaning products to laundry soap. Everything you can think of, they put it in the diffuser and they show all of this and they live this sort of health and wellness lifestyle Making moms believe that if you use these oils, your life is going to be better. Your family is going to be happy and healthier. And I just feel like it's not very honest. About to leave. Already packing. Come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. We'll get away. This is what we waited for. Take my hand, we'll make it somehow. We can't miss out. I'm done living life with the lights out. Die with my own doubts. Be free. Okay, so I want to take a minute to go over real quick another thing that a lot of these mommy vloggers with Young Living push, and it's this whole low-tox, non-toxic. Young Living is very much about non-toxic, chemicals are bad, everything has to be natural, your health and well-being all depends on if you're using these natural essential oils and you know, they're like frolicking in the lavender fields while saying how great Young Living is. Well, just like the beauty industry pushes clean beauty, and we all know it's full of shit, there's not actually any, like, guidelines when it comes to saying something's clean. Everybody freaks out over all these different things. There'll be like a laundry list now of things that are not in your products. And I feel like they use this low-tox, non-toxic thing to kind of market these oils. And it's like, well, hey, if you use Thieves Laundry Soap, it's non-toxic. It's not going to hurt your family. It's going to be natural. Your family's going to have all of this stuff cured. And that's what they really push. And that's a big problem. They're pushing that, you know, chemicals are bad. All this stuff that you buy at the store is so bad. You have to clean with natural products. Wash your clothes with natural products. And if you want to do that, that's perfectly fine. 
But in my opinion, it's just a crock of shit. It really is. I mean, it, it doesn't mean anything. And we also have to remember this is social media. It's completely possible <laughs> that the people who push this are making a quick video of their homemade essential oil spray. And then when they get off camera, you know, it's possible that they're spraying everything down with Lysol and Windex. We, we really just don't know. So I would just not take too much stock in natural. Everything needs to be chemical free. There could be natural chemicals too. I wanted to show you this clip really quick I found on YouTube of a baby crying and the mom is like holding up Young Living Seedlings Calm essential oil and she's claiming that this has calmed her baby and it works and it stopped her baby from crying, the smell. Um, this is the kind of stuff that they do and not only that, they will say, oh my kid has a cold, I'm gonna rub this oil on their feet or I'm making this chest rub and they're acting like that this stuff has cure, like this will cure their children of these ailments. I wanted to go over really quick the do's and don'ts and the safety of using essential oils on children and I have never seen not one of these people go over this and I think it's really important. Do's and don'ts when using essential oils on children. Children are more likely to have adverse reactions to essential oils than adults. So it's important to know how to use them safely. Concentrated oils are highly potent and can be risky if not used on children correctly. It is important to use essential oils intelligently. The following is a list of do's and don'ts to remember. Don't use undiluted oils directly on skin. Oils in their full form can be harmful if applied directly to the skin. Safe dilutions for children generally range from 0.5 to 2.5% depending on the condition, the age, weight of the child. Oils can be added to carrier oils, distilled water, and lotion. Don't add undiluted oils to bath water, which I have seen some of these moms do. Since oil and water don't mix, the concentrated form could irritate the skin. Don't swallow oils. Essential oils are highly concentrated oils that can be toxic if swallowed. Don't overuse the oils. Be mindful of how often and how much you use on your child. For example, don't use a lotion that contains lavender and then apply an essential oil. Don't use peppermint oil on children less than 30 months old. Peppermint used on children under 30 months of age can increase a risk for seizures. See, this is why it is irresponsible to push essential oils without giving these disclaimers and telling people to consult their doctor before using anything on their children. Don't use oils near a heat source because it can cause a fire, but don't use oils near the eyes, ears, and nose. I would say that oil was pretty close to the child's nose. I mean, it didn't touch the skin, but the baby was inhaling it. Here it's saying to buy them from a reliable source, avoid sunlight, do store them in a cool, dry place, and apply a patch test first before using an oil on your child's skin. Apply to a small area and wait 24 hours to see if there's an adverse reaction. Essential oils, they're supposed to relieve pain, improve sleep, and clear up allergies. Yeah, but as Kirsten O'Connor found out, you may want to think twice before using them on your kids because doctors say they can be dangerous, even deadly, in the wrong doses. I'm going to do your, this immunity on your back. Allison White is a mom of three girls. Does that help us when you have some sniffles? She believes in the power of essential oils, so much so. This helps her respiratory system. She sells them. Owie, it's a blend for skin support for kids. She promises this popular holistic remedy can do everything from purify your home to refine your skin and enhance wellness. But if used improperly, doctors say essential oils can be deadly. Many of them have been associated with all sorts of toxicity, both acutely, uh, chronically, and sometimes in, 
in interaction with other drugs, and some of the worst manifestations are seizures, uh, dysrhythmias, and death. Look at the numbers from the National Poison Data System from last December. Adverse reactions, while not severe, are on the rise. Pediatric exposures equaled more than 11,400 reports, and the highest number of complaints where an oil was identified, tea tree, eucalyptus, cinnamon, and clove oil. We found reports of several symptoms, including difficulty breathing and seizures, were reported even in babies and children. Dr. Green says he sees an average of two to three kids per month for excessive doses. I always caution parents that there's a lot of potential unknowns. When you buy these essential oils, you don't actually know what you're getting. That's because they're not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration, and they're becoming more widely available. So oils at the dollar store or just on the end cap of a retail store, Sometimes that gives me a uh, pause for concern. She recommends doing your research on the ingredients used and says the most critical takeaway is that you need to figure out a proper dilution ratio. She suggests making sure you're using enough of a carrier oil like vegetable, olive, grapeseed, almond or coconut oil to dilute the essential oil. I say start low and go slow and see what their little sensitivities and their little bodies can handle and what helps them to thrive and be healthy. Often little is good and more is toxic. Keep in mind some essential oils can be applied to the skin or inhaled, but very few are meant to be ingested. Some of them can also interact with prescribed and over-the-counter medications. That's why it's always important to tell your doctor everything you or your kids are using for wellness. A boy accidentally drank his mom's essential oils. This is what happened to his brain. BB is a three-year-old boy presenting to the emergency room with nausea, vomiting, and tachypnea. Tacky meaning fast and nia referring to breath. He was breathing quick and struggling. His mother Megan tells the admitting nurse that she found her son on the floor face down in a pool of his own stomach contents. She turned him over to see his face and she couldn't believe what she saw. She had some of this wintergreen oil left over from years past. It's the same stuff that they have in other pain relief creams that they sell over the counter. Why not mix it with some carrier oils and rub it on all the parts that hurt, she thought. And everything seemed to go great. Megan and her son were able to be happy and healthy because mom was pain free. BB, not knowing any better, got a hold of the oils as he started drinking. When she got back, the bottles of her oil seemed toppled over. It was kind of messy. She didn't remember if she had knocked over some in the rush to pick up the call from her boss, so she didn't think too much of it. Over the next several hours, the oils settle and absorb into BB's body, and his mother has no idea what had happened. He starts to act lethargic, but his breathing becomes labored and fast. He doesn't act like how he normally does for that time of day as he empties his stomach onto the carpet. The problem is wintergreen oil is really concentrated. The bottle that BB drank has the equivalent of at least 66 big aspirin tablets. Just a third of this bottle alone can be fatal if taken by mouth in a child, and BB drank three times that fatal dose because he drank the entire bottle. The clinical decline can happen quickly and suddenly in this setting. The only thing that we can do now is to make the blood basic as quickly as possible to prevent all of that from happening. And luckily the medical team were able to catch it just in time in BB's case. After several days in the hospital and a lesson learned by Megan to take great caution in never exposing any risk ever with any potential household danger to her son, BB was able to make a full recovery. If you are going to use essential oils on your children, please, please use it safely. Talk to your pediatrician, do your research because I feel like a lot of the mommy vloggers do not explain, they do not give disclaimers, they just show what they're doing and people copy them. Your children could be different than their children, even if you use it on yourself. People with different health conditions, they could react differently on the skin in all different types of people. There's just so many variables when it comes to using essential oils, so you have to be really careful. In my opinion, I would not ingest them. They are so potent. I would not want to be putting essential oils in my tea, in my, you know, on my tongue. I'll show you that later in the video. Um, it, it's just, you have to be extremely careful. And I don't appreciate how irresponsible they are with pushing them and their use. So I want to show you this clip of Tiffany Beeston making a tea on her Young Living Instagram. And she's actually showing people 
how to put essential oils into their tea to drink. She puts honey, thieves, frankincense, and lemon. She puts three different essential oils into this tea. Essential oils are extremely powerful. And then she tells people young living oils are the only oils that she would ingest. And then she's giving the recipe, two drops of lemon, one drop of frankincense, and one drop of thieves. This is extremely irresponsible because people have toxic reactions. It is not safe to tell people that it's okay to ingest or give recipes on topical things. I'm going to share you a story that I found of this woman who was sold and, you know, told about essential oils from somebody who works in an MLM and she ended up having a horrible toxic reaction and had to go to the emergency room. It's scary. Stacy Haluka discovered essential oils the way many others have in recent years through an acquaintance who worked for a multi-level marketing company. During an in-home presentation, the wellness advocate hailed the fragrant oils as harmless natural remedies that can treat everything from minor skin irritations and mood swings to autism and cognitive decline. They were so pure, Haluka was assured they could be safely ingested and liberally applied. Yeah. I fell for it completely and started using them every day, says Haluka, a 47-year-old writer and motivational speaker from Ontario, Canada. She infused her water with citrus oil said to detoxify and lathered her skin with stress-relieving lavender. When a faint rash appeared on her forearm, a salesperson told her it was a normal detox reaction and advised her to rub frankincense oil on it. She obliged. After a few months, raised welts began to creep across her abdomen and up the back of her neck. Ultimately, she landed in the emergency room, eyes swollen, oozing blisters across her face, and she had a severe toxic reaction to essential oils. She talks about how she still struggles four years later. She's scarred and she's so sensitive to the oils that she has to choose her personal care products carefully and she will break out in hives when someone around her is wearing the oil. She is now suing the company. Haluka is among a growing number of people turning up with chemical burns, allergic reactions, respiratory issues, and other side effects from the popular fragrant plant extracts. In the past year alone, U.S. retail sales of essential oils soared 14% to $133 million and up from $55 million in 2015. So clearly there can be a lot of dangers and that's one of my main issues with Young Living and the sales representatives, the mommy vloggers who are pushing these oils. It's not the fact that they're selling them, it's the fact that they are not being responsible with how the use is, and they're telling people to put them in their tea, put it on their children's skin, put it on their skin to inhale it, and you have to be very, very careful. So when you please, if you see people on the internet making all these recipes, you have to do research, talk to your doctor, talk to a pediatrician, just really do your research because you have to be so aware how dangerous they can actually be. So dangerous that you could end up in the hospital. And people also don't say that you shouldn't be using essential oils on everything. On your skin, on your inhaling it, eating it. Because you can overuse them if you have it in all these different products on top of ingesting it and on top of inhaling it. You can have serious health issues that can have lingering effects after you get treatment. So I really wish if you are going to sell essential oils through an MLM or whatever, please, please show the risks. I would not recommend showing people how to make recipes because it's just too dangerous. Someone you know may use essential oils. They are these small bottles that have exploded in popularity, but some of them actually come with serious risks and hidden dangers. Poison Control says that they are seeing a steady increase in the number of calls related to essential oils. Stephanie Tinoco investigated and found some users are learning about the risks the hard way. 
Just like red, itchy. An unexplainable like, rash, which Alexandra Meyer says doctors diagnosed as eczema. Eczema just wasn't a good enough answer. How do I just 28 years later start getting eczema? She got a second opinion and found she was allergic to an essential oil she had been applying for months during yoga class. I didn't put two and two together until I got a massage once and they used lavender behind my ears and my ears were on fire. The reaction stopped as soon as she stopped using lavender, but she still uses other oils every day. I put one drop in my water and then it's a really good way to wake up and start the day. And she's not alone. Essential oils are exploding in popularity with diffusion, application, and in some cases, consumption. While experts say most oils are minimally toxic, some can be dangerous, even deadly. The oil of wintergreen is one of the ones that makes us all concerned because a single teaspoon will kill a child if it's if it's really high purity. That's Dr. So Michael Bueller is with North Carolina Poison Control, which is getting more calls reporting problems with essential oils than ever. 816 calls related to essential oils last year compared to 654 in 2016. The trend I think that we've been seeing is mostly unintentional pediatric exposures. Dr. Bueller says there is some evidence people may benefit from popular oils through aromatherapy, but he strongly recommends against consuming any oils without thorough research. There isn't any government oversight over the certifying process, and just because it's certified that yes, this is from this plant, that doesn't mean it's safe. While companies may advertise oils as safe to consume or apply, the FDA does not regulate essential oils and says shoppers should beware of any claims to prevent, treat, or cure health problems. Like medications, they need to be treated with respect, and if not, they can cause harm. Okay, so now I want to talk about another huge problem that I noticed. Young Living sells an essential oil serum called Progescence Plus. Erin Williams was pushing this on her Instagram page. She said the bottle literally comes everywhere with her. She uses it every morning and night without fail. So, Progestance Plus is a serum designed specifically for women and made with natural bioidentical progesterone from wild yam to promote well-being, feelings of relaxation, and harmony and balance. So, Progesterone is used to help prevent changes in the uterus in women who are taking estrogens after menopause. It also is used to properly regulate the menstrual cycle and treat unusual stopping of menstrual periods in women who are still menstruating. It also plays a role in overall fertility health and it helps prepare the uterus for pregnancy. After ovulation occurs, the ovaries start to produce progesterone needed by the uterus. I also took progesterone when I was pregnant and it helped me prevent preterm labor. So here's my issue. Erin Williams is a mommy vlogger that is pregnant a lot. She has multiple children. And this progestant serum is being promoted as like a women's health sort of supplement of essential oil. Now, a lot of the women in her comments that I'm going to show in a minute think it's helping with fertility, regulating their menstrual cycle, things like that. So I seriously have a problem with this. Some of them are ingesting it. Um, I'm going to show you the comments in just a minute. But I have a serious issue with this because Erin Williams has a responsibility on her platform to disclose of what she's using and the, give disclaimers, give the dangers, show why she's using it. All she does is post a photo of herself holding up this essential oil blend that is kind of being pushed and marketed as a women's health supplement. And people really think that it's helping with fertility and menstrual issues. Some of the comments under her post topically wasn't working for me after a year of use. My blood results showed still low progesterone. So now I take two drops under my tongue. I'm going to show you what is in this serum. This woman is all openly telling other women that she is ingesting this. There is all kinds, cedar bark oil, bergamot, peppermint, clove, um, balsam, frankincense, citrus, 
there is a plethora of oils in that one serum and this woman is ingesting it two drops a day that's not okay that's dangerous and Aaron Williams is nowhere in the comments correcting people and saying hey do not ingest it is not meant to ingest the instructions on the website do not say to ingest but Young Living tries real hard to cover their ass when it comes to how to use these essential oils because of lawsuits and trouble they've gotten before, I can tell on their website that they are very careful with their words. But I do know based on what other people have said from working for Young Living and seeing, they do promote ingesting these oils. So they might not say that on the website, but they do teach the reps and saleswomen to promote ingesting them and doing all these recipes on their social media. Young Living is brainwashing people into believing this and spreading it, and it's dangerous. Okay, so, oh my God, I just saw this and ran over to check. I have this and I do, thank you. I forgot about all of this and will be starting to use it daily. I've never done research on this oil. My mom just got it for me forever ago, and I've been using it wrong this whole time. I just started using it. We are trying to conceive, so I'm hopeful. I need to get this one. I read that can also really help with fertility. Okay, so now women with fertility issues are getting their hopes up and believing that this supplement is going to help with their fertility. And someone's also asking how to use it because nobody's showing how to even use it correctly or what they're using it for. And people are just assuming. Now, literally have to replace every other month. It's the best. I never had a regular cycle until I started using this. Um, somebody else said, can you please discuss more about the women's hormone support oils? I was using this every day and I didn't get my period. Once I stopped using the oil, my period came a few days later. Um, I haven't had a normal cycle in years. Would love to try. Anyone get bad effects from it? As I know, plain progesterone can cause side effects. This is ridiculous. These women are being misled. They are not getting fertility and menstrual regulation from this essential oil. It's total bullshit. And if they're ingesting and using too much, it can cause serious harm. You cannot market an oil for women's health and wellness and make women believe that it's going to help with fertility. That is such a traumatizing and upsetting situation that so many women struggle with and it's so hard to deal with already. So getting your hopes up that these essential oils are going to help you get pregnant or if you're having issues with your period and it's gonna help you fix that, that's not okay. And I really wish that Aaron Williams would be more responsible with that. I put most of the blame on Young Living for this because this is what they are teaching. This is what they are pushing the mommy vloggers and the other representatives to post about and market it this way. And it's not okay. Young Living is a disgusting company and I feel for the moms working there who think they're doing something amazing. I am kind of back and forth on how much the mommy vloggers know about how BS this <laughs> company is, but at the same time, I am understanding of why moms join MLMs in the first place. So I'm understanding that they are pushing and believing and doing things exactly as Young Living has taught them to. They're just trying to support their family. They're just trying to keep their income. And I feel like more people need to be empathetic of that. Daycare is expensive. Trying to work to pay daycare is expensive. I'm going to do a whole video about mommy vloggers and why I support them and why I have a problem with the anti-mommy vlogger community, but that'll be a whole nother video. But if they're going to be in this MLM, I really wish that they would safely and responsibly sell these oils to who they're recruiting and customers, etc. Because people can end up in the hospital, 
people can end up sick. Your children can get sick and rashes. You can get welts, blisters, rashes. You can get very ill from ingesting too much essential oils or not using the right amount. So please do your research. Young Living is responsible to teach and show the representatives how to safely promote these oils. And it's just not happening and it's really scary and dangerous. On top of that, a lot of essential oils are extremely dangerous for your pets. So if you have essential oils around, please make sure they are away from pets, away from children, child safety locks, even in from your diffuser. Some pets can get sick from inhaling the different essential oils. So please do your research. Please talk to your doctor, your pediatrician, and just don't blindly follow what these moms are putting on their social medias. I am all about moms making money. You guys know that. I advocate for moms on the internet. Even if they're an MLM and they don't want to leave because they're making too much money for their family, if you're selling essential oils or anything like that, please do it responsibly. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for getting me to 3K. You guys are amazing, and I will see you in my next one. Bye.